Hi, and welcome to a brand new video of the Target Individual Program, the Target Individual Experience. Uh, so today we're going to talk about, and as well as show video of the coercive persuasion, the psychological harassment involving uh, civilian perpetrators who are working alongside uh, these uh, criminal uh, religious fanatics within law enforcement um, who have created the super cult, okay? And this is some of the tactics and some of the things that they do. So I want to talk about that, okay? So on the website, psychologicalharassment.com, it talks about criminal harassment network routines, strategies, and smear campaigns. Criminal Harassment Network Routines, Strategies, and Smear Campaigns that involve psychological manipulation, technology, and uttering threats. Workplace Psychological Harassment and Criminal Harassment Network Strategy, Abuse Strategy. The Workplace Psychological Harassment Strategy, Abuse, any retaliation is used to justify termination so the employee is on the defensive when faced with abuse. The same strategy of abuse is used by the criminal harassment network, the secret police, a mob, and police. Now I want you to remember that word here, secret police. Okay, criminal harassment through technology, focus ultrasound and energy assault weapons, different types of radar assault from neighboring homes, public places, weaponization of space, over months aimed to inflicting long-term serious illness and deadly cancer. The targeted citizen is on the defensive again. Any claims of assault result, results in incarceration through police psychiatric intervention. Any retaliation of violence is used to incarcerate the targeted victim. Any gun violence is used to advocate gun control. A defensive population is subjugated is subjugation to subjugation through organized crime and tyranny. Criminal Harassment Network Strategy, Maurice France, Hirogorian, Hirogorian Abuse Strategy. According to Marie France Hirogorian, psychiatrists, psychiatrists, the intent of many emotional abusers is to systematically destabilize and confuse their victim with irrational threatening behavior that preys on the victim fears and self-doubt, to isolate and control them and ultimately to destroy the identity. And often emotional abuse builds over a long period of time until it becomes so unbearable that victim lash out in frustration and anger, aka hidden back, only to appear unstable and aggressive themselves, which could be linked to or to the cause of rage shooting and rampage. Often Emotional abuse built over a long period of time until it becomes so unbearable that victims lash out in frustration and anger, only to appear unstable and aggressive themselves. This, according to Hirogorian, is the intent of many abusers to systematically destabilize and confuse their victims with irrational, threatening behavior that preys on the victim's fear and self-doubt, to isolate and control them, and ultimately to destroy their identity. Psychiatrist Marie Francis Harrigorgan, author of Lee Herschel Morale. Okay. Uh, criminal harassment network strategy, damage, provocation, rampage. Pushing people to, vo to violence consists of abuse or inflicting a damage, financial loss, homelessness, smear campaign, and criminal record, serious illness, and cancer. Feeling to honor and repetitive, repetitive humiliation and using provocation to push people to aggressiveness, looking deranged or enraged or violence. Any resulting violence is used to repress the targeted citizen, and any race shooting is used to advocate gun control, a defensive population which makes citizens more vulnerable to abuse, hidden abuse, or subjugation through organized crime. And I'm just going to leave it at that right now. So remember I said remember the word secret police. This is a very, very good um, article from Strategic Culture 
Foundation. Um, and the website is uh, www.strategic-culture.org. And it talks about why America law enforcement empire resembles secret police in a dictatorship. Okay? And I'm just going to read just a few paragraphs here. Okay? Secret police are characteristics of dictatorship. Also does the conventional thinking on the subject. Police in democracy in democracies operate for the most part transparently and within a set of rules and guidelines that limit their ability to grandiosely punish citizens who have done nothing wrong. If a policeman operate on the rule of law step operating on the rule of law steps out of line, he can be held accountable. That is also conventional thinking. Because we all know police officers step out of the rule of law all the time and the majority of the time they get away with it, they're not held accountable. And this is what's happening to us as TIs when police officers uh, target us and harass us in this coercive persuasion, this criminal coercive persuasion program that is used as a cover up for the experiment, non consumer, non human experimentation that's taking place, the illegal microchipping of human beings for the purpose of remote door monitoring, the use of direct energy weapons such as microwave technology, uh, radio wave technology, and also vibrational acoustic technology. Okay, but what happened when an ostensibly uh, democratic police force becomes corrupt and start doing things that are outside its zone of responsibility and does so to benefit a political relationship that will in turn protect those who have broken the law on the cover of carrying out their official duties. That is the characteristic of what we have been calling a deep state, with forces drawn generally from the political class and security services conspire together to control what the public is allowed to know while also manipulating nuances like elections to make sure that the correct outcome emerges. Indeed, deep state operating in a democratic in a democracy or republic is far more dangerous that the secret police in a di th it should be than the secret police in a dictatorship. That is because in a system where the forces of the state are all powerful, nearly everyone except that what they read and what the government says, it is all a lie. In a democratic system, there is what intelligence officers would refer to as plausible deniability, which means that even when the government is behaving very badly, much of the public will believe that it is acting honorably because they want to trust that the system works. And when the deep state includes gov uh, management of the media, many citizens will likewise believe what they are reading or hearing is honest reporting, even when it is not. So you guys should read the rest of this. Um, it's not too long, but I want to get to the video and talk about, um, you know, exactly uh, what they continue to do, um, and even today. Okay. So yesterday, because I did the video again, um, you know, I did the video in in the uh, I think around midday or so, and um, they're trying to again send me a subliminal message about being quiet, and I put the video out. All right, and after I put the video out, uh, there was silence for like about two hours, and then afterwards, during the night, you hear the noise campaign began. All right, and it was a lot. And so this morning, uh, I dropped the kids off to school, took Pam to work, heading on my way back to the block, and I drove as I turned uh, the corner. I think I went down to the next block, and there was a police vehicle that was parked up. Now it was parked up in between two cars. The minute that I drove past. The police vehicle they pull out of the parking space and start following behind me so i switched the um the camera to the uh front facing camera so i can record them so the back window is a little blurry because it was raining um but you can see uh, you'll, you'll see for a second okay as they come into focus. So there you go, the police car following behind me. Okay. And, you know, it, it went on for quite a bit. 
okay because again they're trying to intimidate me so they were falling behind me as you can see and I'm just fast uh, uh, I'm just skipping some of it because you know it, it was it was a good uh, couple minutes uh, that they were following me and then they eventually turned off as you see me looking in my rear view mirror okay Okay, and now when I stop, now they go past. Now again, they were um, I think I said something. Oh, I was saying bye to them. <laughs> so again, they were parked up in between two cars. They were, you know, literally parked up. And the minute I drove past them, they pull out of the parking space, which tells me that they were waiting for me. And what I should have done. I should have um, called out the license plate of the police vehicle and I have to remember that the next time this stuff happened so anyway while they were following me okay they were um, so civilian perpetrators who were working with these police officers on the street and they were doing this they were doing this and then doing this they were doing this to me Okay, and you know, I don't have two cameras, so I can't show what happened. But if I had um, was recording through the back camera, you'd have seen the civilians. But I decided, you know what, it's better to record the police because, again, as I said, when you're building evidence against uh, you know, government agency or people within a government agency who's uh, harassing you on a daily basis, you know, being in this program. It is more valuable to get evidence of police officers, uh, you know, fire department, uh, uh, firemen, you know, who engage in this type of behavior against you because these are government agencies, okay? And the, the civilian perps, I don't know them, so, you know, I don't even know their names, so what am I going to do? I can't sue them, right? But the government agency, you can, all right? Whether it's one police officer that's, that's uh, acting out of line, you can sue the police department or the fire department or you know if it's a the ambulance whichever um, hospital that ambulance begin to uh, belong to with the noise campaign uh, you know you can you can file civil action against them okay and that's what I've been trying to tell TIs all the time okay and also being able to to study this program and identify the things the coercive uh, tactics and nature of what is being used against you all right so after they turned off, um, then I switched to the, uh, because the one thing, when they left, when they turned off, you saw them uh, drove from behind me, and then they turned off, right? Within a minute, I started hearing fire trucks, right? So there was the fire truck that passed behind me, and then, um, you know, I switched the camera to the back camera of the the phone and I started recording okay and so what you're gonna see here now is just like I said right after the police turned off and the uh, the fire truck or that passed me now you see the civilian purple in the green jacket you'll see let me go back. She's going to walk across the street. Okay. She looks at me and then she starts playing with her hair. And you'll see how now she is twirling, twir twirling her hair. Okay, I'm going to um, just skip past some of this. Uh, so, okay, so so now, you know, when you read uh, some of this stuff and they talk about how, um, you know, you'll see them with these envelopes, these file envelopes saying that, you know, trying to send you subliminal messages about, you know, they, they have this profile, this file on you and blah, blah, blah. So this woman here, she came and she stood up here and then she started doing all these hand signals, right? And you see when I turn the phone, how she takes out 
her phone because I was as she was doing her hand signals, I started giving her hand signals. So what they would normally do when they do hand signals uh, to me and I do hand signals back to them, immediately they would start taking out their phone. And if I was walking, I would take out my phone also because I do the same thing what they do. I mirror their action. Okay. So now, now what you're gonna see here is the fire trucks okay now you guys watch my videos you know I turned up on this block the majority of time on my way back you know on the block right and so here you have the fire truck over here and then you'll see as I make the turn And they and they're just standing outside in the street. They're not they, they're not in any houses or whatever. They're just standing right there. Now check this out. Okay, I'm not done. Okay, check this out. And I they start with the the ambulance now with the noise campaign again. Okay. Actually, this was the, uh, the SUV, but it wasn't. There was an ambulance that you could, you guys are gonna see if I remember. Okay. Now, let's let's check this out. All right. So, okay, here we go. So now, see the police there again. You start to see them. Like I said, when you when you start to see when I start to see a heavy presence of police, you know, I know I'm being targeted heavily. Okay. And usually what happened afterwards is that I start getting headaches because of the remote door monitoring, right? Okay. So as I turn, you see this guy on the right. He's wearing a red shirt. Okay. Watch as I approach. He starts playing with his hair. And let's see. When he gives me, oh, missed it, but he literally gave me the middle finger. So I play with this here, and then he does this. Okay, <laughs> that's what he does. Now let's go back. Let's see. He's staring at his phone, playing with his here. Okay. Okay, let's see. All right. All right. So now that they've blocked off the street, because again, they had that whole thing set up with the guy in the red shirt, you know, when he sees me, he starts playing with his hair and gives me the middle finger or what have you. Now they're going to leave, right? It's funny how that works, right? Yeah, because they, they block up the street and they know that they couldn't use the silence on spe spectrum to instruct me uh, to go straight, right? Because had they not block up that street, I would have turned up the street. So, you know, because they couldn't influence me in that way, they have to block up the street to make sure that I go where they wanted me to go. Okay, that's how they get around when they... Mm hmm Okay. All right, let's get to the next video. So there you see the police vehicle again. Okay, let's go back. So now you see the police vehicle, police van again. Okay, now let's 
Let's go back here. Okay, this is this this part here is important. All right. So you see the flashing lights? Okay, that's a police vehicle. It's actually a tow truck. All right. Now you see that he doesn't pull out of the parking space. I mean, not the parking space, but he's towing a car. So he's gonna wait until I get close, right? Right there, and then he drives off, right? So he had ample opportunity to drive off before, but he wanted to do it when I approach again to get my attention, right? So what happened is that now I got on the block, I got parking, then all of a sudden this guy walks towards me, he's holding a ticket, a parking ticket, right? That he I guess he got. And you know he's like holding it up so I can see it now remember that video that I showed you when I pull on the block the park the, the ticket uh, agent uh, the parking agent came across the street and gave me a ticket for double parking even though it was a Saturday I was in the car I just pulled up I was in the car I didn't leave the car I didn't double park and nothing like that I just pulled up to let my son out of the vehicle which I am allowed to do okay and you know for him to give me uh, double parking ticket on that to let you guys know that it was intentional, right? So I fought the ticket. I went online, uploaded pictures, you know, the evidence, to, you know, and my explanation. And they said that it's going to take like 45 days to uh, for to make a decision. Well, I never got that decision, right? They never sent uh, mail out as opposed to what the decision was. So. I don't know what happened. Maybe they manipulated. They didn't send the ticket uh, to us, so therefore we don't know what the decision or the outcome was on that. So maybe they, they want to use us as an excuse to uh, tow the car because again, that's what they're trying to insinuate, right? Okay, now check this out. Let's go back. <laughs> so they're very they're very crafty in how they condition you and how they want you to think, right? So remember just um, past the police tow truck. So now check this out. So here you have these two people here. If you look to the right, you see this woman, she's with this gray shirt, and there's another woman that's behind this pillar right here. And they're both turned staring inside this parking lot. Because again, you know, I guess they saying that they're gonna tow the car and then when I go pick up the car, then that's the that's at, at that point where I guess where I'm gonna be arrested, right? So again, when you look at psychopathic uh personalities and how psychopaths like to torture and reveal to their victim what exactly they're going to do to them this program because the you know particularly the FBI the CIA they've studied you know uh, serial killers their mindset psychopaths and sociopaths and they basically created and crafted this psychological program based on the minds of psychopaths and sociopaths Okay, uh, but what they do now is they're getting civilians, uh, club members, right, who they manipulated and who they recruit to carry out these sort of uh, tactics and, and, and subliminal messaging. Okay, let's get to this part right here. Okay, so you see this guy in the white shirt, start sticking his fingers in his ears as he walks across the street.
case. There's some other things that I missed, but I'm not gonna uh, go through them. Okay, uh, uh, this part right here. So, all right. So here you see the red, the red uh, theme at work here. Uh, you see this guy, the red hat, red jacket, and he's staring up at the wall green uh, sign. Okay, and he's he's very interested in it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've never seen somebody walk down the street and stare at a sign that this individual is. But again. Uh, you know, it is meant to grab your attention. Okay. And so now we come up on this construction site. That's my, uh... Okay. So, driving by this construction site, you see these guys, these construction worker here, they're all wearing white hats. As soon as I approached, they all started pointing in my direction, but they're pointing at me, right? <laughs> Which is funny. But again, this is the, the kind of thing that they do, right? So they all start, you know, and then as I approach, Now watch what happened when I turned the um, the phone. Uh, actually, I, t I didn't turn the phone, but I touched the phone. All right, and see how he comes in front, and now he has his back turned towards me. It was funny, like I said, as soon as I approach, they all pointed in my direction and now he one of them turned and he looked at the tire of the car watch and this is what they do a lot of times so they'll they'll walk if I'm walking they'll walk in they'll turn and either look at the the the, the car tire or the car wheel or the the license plate uh, behind the vehicle or in front of the vehicle. Watch. Okay. Now, as he turned, look at his face. I'm, I should have turned the damn phone, but he turns and he looks down at the car tire. Okay. And they're not done. They're not done. So, I got back in the house, and I realized that Ethan didn't take his glasses with him. So, um, and again, if I go back to this video, and I forgot about this. See, I remember it now, but <laughs> I forgot about this. Okay, so, okay, let's go. All right? Okay, so let's do this. Um, let's go back. Slightly. Okay, so you see this guy in the orange, uh, yellow, and gray vest. Okay, and there's a reason why this guy in the green and orange and gray vest came and turned his back uh, towards me, right? Because right here, then when he does that, I want you to look. Okay, now see he takes his hands and he's going to take his glasses off. And again, this is how they send you subliminal message to bypass your 
subconscious, your subconscious. Because I didn't think about this, right? But when I got home, the first thing I noticed when I got into the living room was Ethan glasses. Now, normally, Ethan would, um, you know, if he leaves his glasses, you know, I just, I'm not going to walk to the school to bring him the glasses, right? But today I did, right? And this is, this is why, okay? Subliminally influencing you, right? So how did they know Ethan left his glasses at home? Because again, when you're being surveilled in your home, everyone in the household is being surveilled. Okay, and you know this is this is this is what they do. Okay, all right. So now let's get back to the video where um, I got in, got into into the school. I was talking to the security guard, and I asked her to call his classroom to tell him to come down and say pick up his glasses. So. I'm waiting for him. All of a sudden, these two guys came and stand up right there in front of me. He started doing all these hand signals. So I was on the phone with another TI talking, and I was like, listen, I'll call you back, right? So they didn't realize that I was recording at first. Okay? Now, check this out. Okay? Uh, actually, let me... Um, uh, oops. Okay, let's start from the beginning. All right. So one of the things they love to do is that when they see me, they love to touch their clothing. They'll put their hands on their clothing. They'll they'll take their palm of their hand and rest it on their um, their stomach area or what have you. Particularly if they're wearing certain colors, right? So look at how as he walks off, he's staring at me, and then he's grabbing his keys in his hand. Right? I want you to look at this, right? literally staring me down now this guy now he starts and I want you to look at his hands right the guy wearing all black look at his hands okay and now he starts grabbing on, on his pants okay now he re now he turns I see now he's staring at me, right? He's staring at me, okay? <laughs> but again, this is the tactics that they use, right? All right, so now he knows that he's being recorded, okay? So now he walks with his head down, <laughs> okay? And he stands up there trying to hide, okay? Now, so now he got to play it off because, you know, he got caught. So, you know, he got to play it off. So... Why is he looking at the water fountain like that, right? Okay. And then he leaves, right? <laughs> so, I'm telling you, I was there, you know, I waited for two minutes, and then they came and they stand up right there doing all these hand things and stuff like that. And so I was like, hey, um, and the thing is that they knew I was on the phone with another TI speaking, so they didn't think that I was going to be recording that's going to continue the conversation while they do all this stuff in front of me, right? But I had to stop the conversation, and I started recording able to get this this, this glimpse of what the people are doing. I want you to watch it again. I'm going to play it. Hey, I'm going to play it. Yeah, call the perp mother efforts. <laughs> but again, you know, this is this is what they do, you know. And these people, like I said, uh, within the school, they have the teachers, the administrators, the custodians, all participating and targeting me and my kids. And they have the other children within the school targeting my kids as well as me also. But you know, again, just exposing it. Just trying to show what exactly they're doing and I hope that I'm able to convey you know my experience and for other TIs to understand that you know this is not in your mind this is being done to you okay and um, and you got to fight back you got to fight back 